Hello everyone, welcome back today. We are joined by Dr. Paul Koigi, an OBGYN with the Nairobi Hospital. And um, welcome, Dr. Ri. Thank you. Yes. Today we are talking about polycystic ovarian syndrome. And just to start us off, I think mm. the first thing I would ask is what is polycystic ovarian syndrome, also known as um, PCOS? Yes. So PCOS is a complicated condition uh, whose cause is not really very well known, mm -hmm. but it's characterized by three things. Number one, you find that the patient has got issues with menstruation, so they tend to ovulate and menstruate very, very rarely. So their periods tend to be very few and very far in between. And when they occur, they may be very scanty or very heavy. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is that uh, they have what is called hyperandrogenism, where you have an excess level of testosterone that causes quite a number of problems in the body. And that can be present clinically, what you can see on the patient, or based on what you, you get from a result from a lab test. We call that biochemical hyperandrogenism. And then the last one is uh, where it gets its name from whereby when you look at the ovary directly or when you look at the ovary at ultrasound then you find that the ovary has a lot of what you call cysts and a cyst on an ultrasound is what is called a follicle where it's a collection of fluid within the ovary where the eggs reside so polycystic means that there are very many of them okay um, so obviously now we know that this is something that only affects women Yes. Um, and it occurs in the ovaries. Yes. So obviously we are talking about, uh, um, you know, we're talking about um, interference with reproductive health or maybe your ability mm -hmm. to have children. And just to take us through, what, what would you say are the major symptoms of polycystic ovarian syndrome and how does somebody know that they have it? The most significant findings in a patient with polycystic ovarian syndrome are one, issues with their menses, so their periods are irregular. Number two, they tend to have what is called hirsutism because of excessive levels of testosterone, whereby they start developing hair on their face, they start developing muscular body habitus, the voice deepens, they become more aggressive, and they may also develop acne. So you find that uh, the, the skin does tend to break out a lot in those rashes and then infertility because if the woman is not capable of producing eggs at the right time if the egg cannot be released then the egg cannot be fertilized then she cannot conceive the other thing that they tend to have is obesity and uh, because polycystic ovarian syndrome is not just about the ovaries there's a complicated relationship between the ovaries not working well and the ability to regulate blood sugar and insulin not working well and the ability of the liver to produce the hormones uh, and the, the proteins which enable transport of the hormones within the body. Yeah, so this is why you had said um, where it doesn't just affect the ovaries. Yes. We, had, we had spoken a little bit earlier and I had asked you why is it, um, why is it called a syndrome and not disease? Yes. Yes. So basically, what happens with this polycystic ovarian syndrome is that not only do you have the ovaries not being able to release the eggs, but you have an, a problem with the regulation of insulin. We actually call it insulin resistance. And because of that insulin resistance, then the, the pancreas, which is the organ that produces insulin to regulate blood sugar, tends to produce more insulin. and in the process of that insulin resistance developing, there is also a risk of developing the diabetes. Right. right. We call it metabolic syndrome, which eventually progresses to diabetes. Then, uh, over and above that, the liver produces a protein called sex hormone binding globulin, which is what binds to hormones like testosterone to help transport them around the body. Mm -hmm. So when the sex hormone binding globulin is reduced, then you have a lot of free testosterone, which is what now starts causing 
the Have changes them. on the skin, yes. changes in the body habitus, changes in the way the voice sounds. Mm. So you said that there's no known cause for it. Um, True. But is this something that can be prevented and is there a cure? How does one go about it if they think they have uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome? Okay, uh, there is no specific cause that has been identified over the years, ever since PCOS was first described in 1935. Mm -hmm. Now, to date, we've never really been able to identify a specific reason for it existing, but you, you can actually start suspecting that somebody will tend to be at higher risk for it if they have a, a strong family history of obesity, if they have a strong family history of diabetes, and if someone else within the family, particularly if it's a first degree relative, like a mother, a sister, and so on, having had a history of polycystic ovarian syndrome themselves. Okay. Yes. So how would you go about managing it if or how what are the what is the steps to take if i'm at home and i feel like um i feel like i have pcos and i actually have two questions in one for that yes is what ages does this affect i mean do you notice it in young girls or it starts to hit you at a specific age so should we become more wary at maybe 30 years old or it's, it can hit you at any time uh well this actually tends to be a problem of women within the reproductive age group so if a woman has hit menopause then it's very unlikely that she'll have it it tends to start off at an earlier age but uh, for the most part uh, most of the women who end up developing polycystic ovarian syndrome will tend to have had issues with the regularity of their menses right from the time their menses began yes so women in their mid-20s to early 30s do tend to be among the more common people who begin presenting to look for medical attention, mostly because they're having difficulties getting pregnant. That's usually the first culprit. Mm -hmm. I, let's say I know someone or I suspect that I have uh, mm -hmm. PCOS. What are the steps I should take? So uh, one of the things about PCOS is that uh, the general principles of treatment of medical conditions applies in that the earlier a problem is discovered and the earlier treatment is instituted, the less severe the problem is likely to become and the lower the incidence of complications. So uh, since we don't have an avenue of preventing it, since prevention would be better than cure but we don't have a way of preventing it, so the first trick is uh, please go to the hospital. If you feel that there is a problem, please go to the hospital, seek the attention of your resident gynecologist. That way, you will undergo a whole spectrum of clinical evaluation. So we sit down, we listen to the history, we do a clinical examination. That's where issues like having excessive hair may be spotted and uh, change in the, the body structure. Uh, then from the clinical examination, then we send you to the laboratory. And at the lab, we send you for several blood tests. Uh, the first one being uh, thyroid stimulating hormone, uh, evaluation of thyroid function, because thyroid issues can cause irregularities of menstruation. Mm -hmm. Then we also evaluate hormones that are directly related to reproduction. So we look at issues like follicular stimulating hormone and uh, luteinizing hormone and anti-mullerian hormone. And those tend to be elevated and we also evaluate for issues to do with insulin resistance so you can actually look for the insulin levels and you can also evaluate the blood sugar control using what is known as an oral glucose tolerance test and uh, from there there are other hormones like uh, dehydropreandosterone which uh, is looking for excessive levels of testosterone Yes. Um, so let's say somebody has been given a diagnosis. Yes. Um, I think I have two questions here. First is, is does this mean that um, they will never have a child because there's irregular periods? Um, and also, is there a cure? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, well, in the process of establishing the diagnosis, you also need to do a radiological test uh, so that you evaluate to see whether they are. There are excessive numbers of cysts 
in the ovary. And actually to establish the diagnosis, we have got three, three criteria. And the first one being uh, issues with the menstrual periods. And the second criteria being evidence of the excessive levels of androgens. And the third one being demonstrating that the ovaries are either very large or have very many cysts. Mm -hmm. By being very large, we are concerned about it if it's more than 10 centimeters, uh, 10 ml in size, and if there are more than 12 follicles within that ovary. Okay. And you have to establish the diagnosis by having at least two out of those three being present. So how we manage the problem? Suffice to say, we don't have a silver bullet for treating PCOS, but we do have an entire spectrum of treatment options that should be able to significantly alleviate both the symptoms and significantly help reduce the overall burden of the syndrome. So the first and most important thing is lifestyle modification, where we talk about uh, exercising regularly, eating healthy. By eating healthy, we are talking about reducing the amount of sodium uh, in the diet. We are talking about reducing the amount of fat in the diet, increasing the vegetable and fruit content. And uh, the other thing is weight loss. So by weight loss, we are talking about targeting to reduce the weight loss by at least 10%. So if, uh, since obesity tends to be a common problem with a patient who has PCOS, say for instance, a patient has about 100 kilograms of body weight, it really helps them if they can lose at least 10% of that weight. Second thing that we have um, in the arsenal of treatment is uh, what we call medical treatment, where we administer medications. And the medications are in several groups. The first are medications to regularize the hormones. And by regularizing the hormones, we are targeting regularizing the periods. So we can start off with oral contraceptive, therapy, so what, what we routinely call the family planning mm -hmm. pills, because if you can get the hormones back in sync, then you can reduce the burden of the syndrome on the patient. Second problem, uh, second medication that we give is to target the testosterone. So we have medications that reduce testosterone, all right? So, so medications for family planning, medications to reduce testosterone, but then medications to regulate the sugar, such as uh, the most common one we use is called metformin. And then if the patient is overtly diabetic, they may require insulin as well. Mm -hmm. And then the other medications that we give are medications to help in reducing the overall amount of hair on the body. They're medications that can actually help in instituting hair loss. So if you apply them, uh, like a flony thing, then they can actually help in reducing the amount of hair. Then the, uh, the third uh, therapy that we offer is purely supportive and purely cosmetic, and that is uh, hair removal therapies. And among the hair removal therapies are where uh, the cosmetics line comes in, where we have tweezing, threading, waxing, and what we call electrolysis where you stick a needle into the root of the hair and you deliver an electric current to kill that hair. All right. So those are, are useful for treating the skin related issues. And uh, the last option that we have as treatment is surgery. So uh, among the surgical options, we have mainly two. There is uh, the historical one, which we used to call wedge resection of the ovary because if there are too many cysts in the ovary, if you cut off part of that ovary, then you reduce the number of cysts physically. And that should reduce the overall amount of hormones being produced, which may restore the menstrual cycle. And uh, the other one is known as laparoscopic ovarian drilling. And uh, that one you use energy, either in the form of uh, what we call cautery, where you deliver an electric current directly into the ovary, or laser ovarian drilling, where you direct a laser straight into the ovary, and you are targeting to puncture 
the cysts in the ovary. So that one we recommend that conservatively. You don't want to be too aggressive in terms of burning out the ovary because if you destroy too much ovarian tissue, then she'll have no more eggs. So that's the spectrum of treatment. And uh, the general advice is the earlier you start this treatment process, then the earlier you can get help. And the earlier you get help, the lower the incidence of uh, complications because you've reduced the level of the severity okay. of the problem. All right. I think we failed to address one little thing which I think a lot of ladies who might be watching this and men, you know, for yes. their partners who yes. have PCOS is fertility. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, if somebody has PCOS, mm -hmm. can they have children? Uh, it's possible for them to have children, but the ability to have children is critically based uh, on, uh, it's critically dependent on the ability to get those ovaries to produce the eggs. So if we get the hormones back in sync, if we counteract the testosterone, if we lower the overall blood sugar levels and we get the body to behave in terms of the production of insulin, then by treating all those problems, then you, you tackle the underlying problem. And if you can tackle the underlying problem behind the, pro the syndrome, mm -hmm. then she has an opportunity to get pregnant. Okay, yes. All right. Is there anything you'd like to add that we've not covered? Maybe we can just finalize the interview with that. Uh, I think my strongest take home uh, that I would like to offer everyone out there is problems in medicine usually escalate to a very large degree simply because we tend to have a very poor health seeking behavior. We don't wait until we can't move, until we are absolutely stuck to go to the hospital to look for help. So my advice is go pay your gynae a regular visit. That way, if there is a problem, it's likely to be caught earlier. And if the problem is caught earlier, you have better opportunities for treatment and better opportunities for improved quality of life and health. Okay. Yes. All right, thank you so much, Dr. Paul Koegi. That is Dr. Paul Koegi. He is at OBGYN at the Nairobi Hospital. Thank you very much. Um, if you have any questions and comments, please be sure to leave them in the comment section of the video. If you've liked this video, please give us a thumbs up, like, and do share with somebody who you think this information will be, be beneficial for them or to them. Asante sana, have a good day, and um, have a good day we'll see you next time.